sense uh, to talk to each other formally in these big summit settings. I wish we could have had a return to the frequent strategic and economic dialogues that uh, marked the Bush and Obama administration. My impression is that China is trying to communicate several key messages to the international community. Uh, first, uh, that China is not a threat uh, to other countries. Uh, second, in fact, China is ready to work with other countries to help them develop uh, through schemes like uh, the Global Development Initiative, the Global Security Initiative, uh, the Belt Road Initiative, uh, to improve trade relations, uh, to improve their uh, inf infrastructure, to improve security, and so on. Uh, third, China advocates the principles of non-interference, uh, mutual recognition and respect, and seeks peaceful coexistence, uh, and thereby supports a true multilateralism instead of hegemony and unilateralism. And we see this, I think, in, in China's commitments to organizations like ASEAN, uh, like the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, and indeed the United Nations, where it based uh, its, its initiative, the Global Development Initiative. Today, China is a leader in many international and regional organizations. And this enhanced participation reflects China's renewed confidence as a world leader and its determination to be a key leader player in the international order. Global governments means global. That means constructive engagement uh, between all partners involved. And there's a lot of room for improvement in global governments regarding uh, China and the Western world. You think of the problems of climate change, for example. Without China, that will be difficult to obtain. Without the Western world, and particularly the United States, but also the European Union, climate change is also uh, high, uh, or protection against climate change is hardly uh, possible either. So both sides need to cooperate. The signs are that the world is trying to move on from the paralysis of COVID and a careful return to normalcy. And these meetings between President Xi and other world leaders is really proof positive that China is universally recognized as a global leader with the world's largest population, largest market, and largest economy by purchasing power parity. It's a force to be reckoned with, and it's a required player to solve a host of interconnected global problems uh, where national interests overlap, such as supply chain disruptions, inflation, global public health, climate change, and the like. Now, second, several of these leaders have been openly courted uh, by the U.S. Uh, for alliances against China. And the fact that they have come to Beijing, as German uh, Chancellor Schultz did, uh, repudiating the sort of decoupling the U.S. has tried to strong arm on allies like Germany uh, is a key indicator that there are already profound fault lines emerging in America's containment strategy. And we saw Xi and, for example, Chancellor uh, Scholz meeting recently. That was not uncontroversial in Germany. Also, I believe it was not uncontroversial in other capitals around the world. Um, but Scholz insisted on his visit because he believes that personal engagement makes sense. And we don't know whether this uh, visit was a success because we don't really know what really was achieved, what really was talked behind the scenes. We will only find out many years from now, I would say, when the documents and the archives become open. But it certainly was the beginning of a good rapprochement between uh, uh, an important Western countries uh, and uh, China.
It's quite wise, uh, of course, for China to seek friends uh, elsewhere and to improve relations with others while the U.S. tries to isolate and harm China. Uh, you know, frankly, if the bully doesn't want to change his ways or advance peaceful relations, then spending uh, more time uh, cultivating the company of others who need and want you and likely are also sick and tired of, uh, of American hegemony and unilateralism, this is the, the right cor uh, course of action to take. I share the opinion that, that a lot of other people share that, you know, although it's quite marvelous that the two leaders met, um, and it would have been yet another tragedy if they hadn't, we can be optimistic and, and should, you know, apply the pressure of optimism that uh, Blinken will come to uh, uh, China, as Biden indicated he would, and that they will seek uh, real breakthroughs. The biden Xi meeting in Bali was also meant to reset the relationship with China, if you like, to um, open uh, new, engaged and constructive relations, and above all, to overcome the recent tension, to reset the atmosphere. And I think that has been achieved. And in fact, this whole year has been uh, one uh, aggression after another from the United States uh, towards China. And this is what, you know, China says, you know, you say that you don't want uh, conflict, you say that you respect the one China policy, and yet your actions don't match your words, right? So um, are, are we are we likely to see this this trend change significantly uh, now that we've gotten past the midterm? Unlikely. And the Republicans and the Democrats are now competing with each other to see who can be uh, tougher on China, right? That this is going to be their calling card in uh, in U.S. elections because they're unable to solve uh, the sort of poli uh, the sort of problems that the U.S. has, and it's very convenient to blame all those problems on on China. I think was perhaps perhaps the most important aspect of uh, the talks to now give it back to the underlings, so the people, the technicians, the secretaries of state, the ministers who deal with the issues in a much more concrete, detailed way. She and Biden didn't talk about many details. That was a general talk. That was a strategic, geopolitical talk. While now Biden and Vice President Harris and probably other uh, politicians and above all uh, officials, the experts, the technical experts, will visit China and Chinese experts will visit the United States, I assume, in order to really deal with the issues in a more concrete, more uh, um, detailed way. And I think only that way we can make uh, progress. I wish we could have had a return to the frequent strategic and economic dialogues that uh, marked the Bush and Obama administrations because they resulted in win-win progress and established more robust bilateral relations. But Trump killed them and uh, re-establishing them uh, to me is still a ways off, but it's very important uh, to do so as soon as uh, the c conditions allow.